And I have seen brilliant sunlight filter through moist leaves, casting miniature rainbows on crystal clear puddles below. And it was nice. But I don't, I really don't mind a long walk, a, you know, a nature hike, a walk in the woods, and I love picnics by the lake, I really do. I just don't like to sleep outside. I went to school for 20 years so that I would not have to sleep outside. <laughs> or eat food cooked over an open fire. <laughs> Roughing it for me, I'm not speaking for anyone else. Roughing it for me is diet soda and cheap toilet tissue. <laughs> I'm sharing this secret with you because my sons, I have two sons, they're 14 and 17, and they are bugging me about going camping. You know how they do when they see something different and they want to do it. We, we have a tent, for some reason we have a tent. In the summer, we put it up in the backyard and they sleep in it. It's safe back there. I stay in the house and sleep in the middle of my bed, spread eagle. <laughs> well, I shouldn't have said spread eagle. Some of the men have drifted. Come back. <laughs> Come back. Here, here, here. <laughs> okay. We are pretty much... <laughs> Like, <laughs> been a long day. That's what that barbecue does to you. Okay, we're pretty much together. I don't have a stiff back in the morning. They can come inside and take a shower. That's that's my idea of camping. But they say sleeping in the backyard is not really camping. They have a tent, sleeping bags, mosquitoes, stars, grass, flashlights, and they sleep in their clothes. That's camping to me. I have encouraged them go. Explore the great outdoors without me. I have been camping. When I was a child, my parents took me to Lake Whitney and we went camping every summer in July and August. And I would sit in the car with the windows up and read a book. <laughs> 200 degrees and I would not get out of the car. Occasionally, they would coax me out to fish with them. There's only just this little problem. I don't, I don't like to touch worms or hooks or fish. So, but I'm a good fisher person if you just take care of those little details. Every few months is something else with these guys. You know how it is. They want a dog. They want a swimming pool. They want home cooked meals. <laughs> <laughs> this camping phase will pass too. The other day my youngest tax deduction started in on me again. Mom, can we go camping? He asked for the hundredth time. He's persistent. I think that's going to be a good quality someday. Son, I said, you can go camping with your dad and your brother's brother anytime. I don't like camping. But mom, he said, it's no fun if you don't go. I said, just listen. I've never, ever liked to camp. The air is cold. The ground is damp. The birds are noisy in the trees. The long, tall grass makes mommy sneeze. I do not like it here or there. <laughs> I do not like it anywhere. <laughs> I'd much prefer to shop at Sam's. <laughs> oh, yes, I would, son. Mom, I am. <laughs> I do not like the feel of fish unless they're fried upon a dish. <laughs> I do not want to steal your joy. Go with your dad. Go with the boys. Oh, yes, I know. Matt's mom, you know, there's one in every neighborhood, those perfect mothers. She's cool. She touches frogs. She's good at pool. Perhaps you should go camp with her, <laughs> if that is what you would prefer. My dear, I do not like to camp. I'd rather lick 100 stamps. I would not like it here or there. I would not like it anywhere. My son, I do not like to camp. Please understand me, mom. I am. <laughs> Norman Cousins, the longtime editor of the Saturday Review, is known as the man who laughed his way to good health. In the 1960s, he was diagnosed with a life-threatening collagen disease that slowly paralyzes the body. His physicians told him that his death was inevitable. Cousins refused to accept the bad prognosis. Against the advice of his doctors, he had himself checked out of the hospital. 
With the help of friends and family, he started a radical new therapy that he had designed himself. It included a nutritional program with high doses of vitamin C, which boosts the immune system. But more importantly, it included even higher doses of humor. He watched funny programs. At that time, that would be the Marx Brothers and Candid Camera. A nurse read him funny stories every day. He did anything he could to make himself laugh. We now refer to this as humor therapy. And we all feel better after a good laugh, don't we? That, that's why people watch Friends and Seinfeld. That's why we love Cosby so much. We feel better after we laugh. In time, Norman Cousins got better. He said that the genuine laughter relieved his pain. Slowly but surely, he regained the use of his limbs. It was a miracle. And eventually, he returned to work full time. In 1979, he wrote a best-selling book called Anatomy of an Illness about his experience. He credited his recovery from that disease and years later from a massive heart attack that should have killed him with his healthy diet and an optimistic attitude. Most certainly, I am not suggesting, do not go home and throw away your prescription medication, okay? <laughs> I'm not saying that. Nor should you go against your physician's advice. However, I am suggesting that a positive outlook is beneficial to your health. I applaud you for being here today, for coming to find out how laughter, laughter can improve your health. Certainly, there are challenges in every life like finding parking in that garage they sent me to. <laughs> and we realize that before you see the silver lining, there's a dark cloud. Sometimes it comes in the form of the people around you, friends, family, colleagues. They can cause stress sometimes. And sometimes it comes in the form of perfect strangers who seem intent on making our lives a living hell. <laughs> For example, I made a simple phone call the other day. As usual, I was placed on hold. I know you guys don't do that at the comptroller's office, but <laughs> this place I called put me on hold. And I heard an automa automated voice that said, thank you for your patience. Sometime, someone from customer service will be with you before the next millennium. <laughs> <laughs> An hour later, I'm thinking, I cannot hang up. I have invested too much time in this call. If I hang up, I will lose my place in the infinitely long line of people waiting to talk to someone, a human, anyone. I will speak to the janitor at this point at this company. Thank goodness for cell phones, huh? I've been able to purchase groceries, fill my car with gas, cook dinner, and clean up the kitchen while waiting for a customer service representative. It all started innocently enough. While reviewing my credit card statement, and I, and I look at it closely now that we're in a recession, I'm not paying an extra penny for anything. I found an item that I had a question about, a simple question. So I dialed the toll-free service number under the illusion that I could resolve the matter in a few minutes. <laughs> Instead, I got this. Thank you for calling Bank of Eternity. <laughs> for faster service, please have your account number available. I had my statement, I was ready. For account information, press one. To apply for a new account, press two. To hear an oral reading of volumes one and two of the Encyclopedia Britannica, <laughs> press three. I thought, that's funny, that's cute. I didn't know they were serious. So I pressed one. <laughs> then I heard, please enter your 20 digit account number followed by the pound key in the next 10 seconds. <laughs> So I tried, it took five attempts, I got disconnected twice, but finally I got it done and I received more instructions. Please enter the last two digits of your mother's weight on her 18th birthday, <laughs> followed by the pound key. I clicked over, called Mama in Jefferson, Texas. I kept thinking at any moment I'm going to have to pull a sword from a stone and slay a dragon to prove that I can speak to someone at this place. Finally, though, there's a light at the end of the tunnel when you hear that wonderful, wonderful phrase. Please hold while we connect you to an account representative. Two days 